good morning dear students we shall have the next module after understanding the velocity and accelerations as vectors we shall take up a very important uh, subject in the motion of kinematics that is what is called a projectile there is one acceleration which is always acting on the bodies whichever is influenced under gravity that acceleration is what is called as acceleration due to gravity you know we had discussed this earlier in some module when a body is dropped freely it comes down it is pulled down by a force that is creating an acceleration there that is acceleration due to gravity even if you project a body vertically upwards its velocity goes on decreasing there that means this acceleration due to gravity is working there as retardation and reducing the velocity so the body goes up until its velocity becomes zero and then starts coming down from there in the same way now you can have the in this two examples what just now i told you you have the velocity of the freely falling body is in the same direction of the acceleration when a body projected vertically upwards the velocity is in the opposite direction of the acceleration there we have a case now where there can be two different directions for velocity and acceleration then results what is called as a projectile motion actually what is meant by a projectile it is a body which is moving under the influence of gravity and with no other influence on that that means if a body is projected with in some initial velocity it just moves starts with a velocity and later on its motion is controlled by only acceleration due to gravity and not by anything else examples you can say a cricket, cricket ball is that is thrown like that say it is a projectile a bullet fired from a gun a bow that is re releasing a uh, arrow the arrow moves once it is uh, set it is going to now move along direction of the uh, velocity as controlled by the acceleration due to gravity so like that uh, these are the examples of projectiles generally you can think any body which is just given some velocity zero in velocity or some other velocity it is left like that for its own fate to go under the influence of the acceleration due to gravity a food packet is dropped from a helicopter there helicopter is moving horizontally say up there and it is dropped there so once it is dropped it is under the influence of gravity before dropping at the time of dropping it is having the velocity of the helicopter there itself at the same time if you think of a helicopter itself that is taking off or an aeroplane that is taking off and going in the air is not a projectile because once it goes into air it is motion is controlled by an engine inside and that engine can direct and divert the motion of the aeroplane there so that's not a projectile it must be left only to influence of gravity a bird that is flying there it goes on fluttering the uh, wings there for its own movement that is not a projectile so therefore let us understand these examples and how this uh, projectile motion is taking place under the light of the velocity and acceleration vectors what we discussed we will be seeing now here let us consider now a projectile that means a body which is given an initial velocity like that in some direction at an angle say alpha 0 initially at t is equal to 0 velocity is g v0 initial angle of projection is that to the x axis it is projected like that what will happen to this you all know this will take a shape of a curve like that and how is it taking place like that because the velocity once it is released from here is under the influence of gravity the acceleration to gravity is vertically downwards that is g so that is always influencing in this vertical direction now suppose you you have a, a resolution for this velocity in two directions vx and then vy two directions the vx component is here vy component is there you know vx is v cos alpha 0 as given there and this is the cosine component y component v0 will be the sine component now 
that is alpha sin alpha 0. So, these two are there. Acceleration is vertical direction, therefore that will influence only the vertical component here. This horizontal component has no uh, effect uh, because of the acceleration due to gravity. That means acceleration due to gravity has no influence on the horizontal component there. So, the particle moves now under the action of these two components. One component affected by the acceleration due to gravity vertically, another component which is horizontal not affected by the acceleration due to gravity. So, as a matter of fact, what happens? It moves in two plane, two, two dimensional plane now with one velocity component along x, one another velocity component along y, like that. So, by the time it comes to here, a point here. This acceleration due to gravity being vertical, it will influence the vertical component. So, vertical component of velocity will be reduced now because acceleration due to gravity is vertically downwards, that is the direction of g. So, this works as retardation, you will find the component here is reduced, the magnitude will be reduced. Whereas, horizontal component, I call it as by dash, Vx dash is not there, Vx is the same, it is the same as what it is here, there is no change. So, after some time, therefore, after, I call it as some time of t seconds, then the velocity Vx will be the same, it will not change, it is not changing. Whereas, y component will be different, it is in this direction, so the velocity component Vy minus g into t. What is Vy? That is V0 sin alpha 0 minus gt, that is how the velocity is changing. So, like this, the velocity component will change. Together will be the final velocity. What will be the velocity effectively now? It is square root of Vx square plus Vy square. That will be the magnitude of the velocity at this point. What will be the direction? That will be something alpha dash suppose. That alpha dash is given by tan inverse y component by x component, y component is this value that is v0 sin alpha 0 minus gt divided by v0 cos alpha 0. So, like this if you evaluate the value components, you can get the value of the direction as well as the magnitude of the velocity at that point, that means the velocity at this point will be in this direction now, that is velocity here, if I call it as v dash, it will be there, that will be there, resultant of these two things, v y dash here, this v x dash suppose, v x dash is the same as v x itself. So, like that the body will be changing its position on the, in its path, so the path will be a curve and it goes like that, that is what we mean by the uh, projectile motion. If you now see that, how this projectile is going to change from point to point, you can see like this. What happens like this out next time? I will show you another figure here. When it comes, comes to a point like that, this velocity component goes on decreasing and at one point it becomes 0. That means at that point velocity is 0 in the vertical component. It has only the horizontal component, that is Vx that is V0 cos alpha 0, that will be there. This component alone is there in that direction. The other direction there is no component at all. So, until then the body will be going up like this. So, here there is velocity, less velocity, lesser velocity and then ultimately zero velocity there in the vertical component. So, like that it goes up. From there what happens? Once it is zero velocity, then but the acceleration to gravity is working there. Instantaneously for a moment there is no influence of vertical there, then therefore the body from there starts moving from there, so it starts moving down like that again. So, you will see the body will be moving like that. That means it comes to next point here because of the increasing vertical component here. This is the same as Vx. This component will change now, I call it as V double dash say. Why? Why is it changing now? Because there is acceleration to gravity acting vertically downwards. 
Though there is no velocity at this point, before it goes next point, there is a component developed vertically because of the acceleration in the vertical direction. Therefore, the body will now travel again with vertical component and horizontal component. Therefore, the direction will be like this. The velocity will have this direction. So, from time to time it goes on like that and this parabola is therefore going to be the shape of the entire projectile. So, ultimately, if this is the initial point of projection, it will come down to this point here. That is what is called the projectile motion. This path is what is called as the trajectory of the trajectory of the projectile there. If you can show this trajectory, trajectory is a parabolic path. What we have put by logical argument here, we can put by mathematical argument also there and then show it. So, like this it moves in the parabolic path. The only thing is, all along the path, the horizontal component is the same, it is not changing. Vertical component is initially decreasing like this, like this, becoming 0 at the maximum point here and then again starts increasing down like this. Comes down like that. So, like that, it will reach like that. Because the acceleration due to gravity is vertically downwards and having the same value throughout, at the same rate at which it is decreasing its vertical component, it will also increase while coming down. Therefore, the curve this part and that part will be symmetric. Therefore, we have a symmetric curve and that is parabola for us. This is what we will be able to see. So, at any point, you can find out the velocity, you can find out all other properties of projectile can be known. Let us see the trajectory first. What do you mean by trajectory? It will tell about the position of the point P, how it is moving. Any point P you take here, the locus of this point P is what is called the trajectory. What is the locus of the point P? That means you will have two coordinates. One is the x coordinate and there is y coordinate. So, that is the x y coordinate there. So, how this x and y coordinates are related to each other is what is going to give us the trajectory equation there. That means, with the influence of the vertical component of acceleration due to gravity that is available there, the vertical velocity is changing therefore, the y coordinate is changing. The x coordinate is also changing because there is a constant horizontal component of velocity taking place there, but both of them are simultaneously taking place therefore, the body will neither move in the horizontal direction nor in the vertical direction, but in a combination of the two that is what is meant by the two dimensional plane. We call it as motion in a plane x direction, x y plane, this is the x y plane of the board, it moves in the x y plane now. So, we also try to find out how these two are linked up. Let us do that. So, for example, at any instant of time, the uh, x displacement, x position is given by, suppose initially it is v is 0, the position is uh, from starting from here, we take its origin here, start from there only as origin. Then, you can take the x as displacement, y, horizontal displacement that is given by v0 cos alpha 0 into t after time t, suppose time t is taken to go from o to p at any instant that this p can be anywhere. So, time also anything else, anything else. So, we take some general way after time t in general the x component of the displacement is given by x is equal to v0 cos alpha 0 into t. Similarly, we come to y component, it is y component is influenced by g, therefore it is v0 sin alpha 0 that is velocity into t minus half g t square also will be there. Here the term is not there because it is not influenced by the value of g there. So, these are the two things and what is common for both? It is uh, they are happening simultaneously at the same time. So, if you have eliminated this t from these two equations, you will get a single equation which governs both and x, y uh, displacements with respect to each other. Let us see that one here. From the equation here, we will get t is equal to x by v0 cos alpha 0.
and use that here in this equation that is y is equal to v0 sin alpha 0 into t that means x by v0 cos alpha 0 minus half g into t square that is x by v0 cos alpha 0 whole square. To simplify this equation, we have the answer for the uh, projectile trajectory there. So, this is, I will write here, y is equal to, here you know, this v0, v0 gets cancelled, sin alpha 0, cos alpha 0 becomes tan alpha 0, x tan alpha 0, minus half g into, this is x square, so rest of things are brought under this, v square, cos square alpha 0, into x square. This is something like some ax plus bx square. So you can see this is uh, the constant here. This is the whole thing is a constant here. And the minus sign of course is there. So this is a parabola in general. If there is a minus sign, it indicates a parabola like this. If there is a plus sign, it indicates a parabola like this. So therefore, we are able to find the answer for why the project trajectory is a parabola like this because of the influence of the gravity along with it there is a horizontal displacement also. So we find this is the trajectory equation. You can remember this equation for producing. You want to find out where exactly the particle is along x direction or y direction. You can use this equation and then find out. I uh, will just put it here again. y is equal to x tan alpha 0 minus half g x square by v0 square cos square alpha. That is the equation of trajectory. Now we can see various other properties also coming up in this. How high it will go? What will be the velocity? I given the velocity equation just now. You can find out the displacements now. We will go for displacement equations. You can see how much time it will take from here to there. Only thing is, only key point to understand in understanding the projectile is, whatever you are work, trying to work out in the vertical direction, any property, vertical, vertical direction, take it with the initial velocity as uh, V0 sin alpha, that is the y direction component initially affected by G. You are taking anything in the horizontal way, Vx, that is with the constant horizontal component V0 cos alpha 0. So that is the key point in understanding the projectile now. Suppose you want to find out how much time it takes to from here to there. So from this is this what we call a maximum height, say. Maximum height there. H we call it. So you want to find out what is the maximum height from here to there. You can find out by making use of the equation now. Say, uh, you can find out time taken to go maximum height. You can find out maximum height also. You can find out. Say, v square minus u square. The equation, I think you know this equation earlier. Uh, v final, v initial square is equal to 2a uh, x or you do a yes I put it as displacement acceleration along a, a kinematics you know this equation. So here initial velocity is in the vertical direction I am talking it is going in the vertical direction suppose you want to find out to maximum height you want to find out suppose maximum height means it in the vertical direction. So you want to find out the vertical displacement then talk about only v y not v x here. So this will be final velocity at this point is 0, it is here V y square 2 g h, the displacement is h, displacement particle is h. So that is what you will get from this. So you can find out this as uh, V y means V 0 square sin square alpha 0 by 
2g minus n gets cancelled that is going to be the maximum height reached so you have the equation now in terms of the vertical component you will get the answer there you can find out how much height it has gone maximum there then how much time it takes to go there you want to find out say time of ascent we call it time of ascent we call it ta suppose how much time it will take once again you get from the equation v is equal to this vf is equal to vi plus a t this kind of equation we have to go up when the final velocity becomes zero that means it goes to maximum height that is the time you require initial velocity is v0 sin alpha 0 a is here minus g into t t is time of ascent so from this you will get time of ascent is equal to v0 sorry sin alpha 0 by g so it will take so much time to go up naturally it will take the same time to come down time of descent also you can find out you will get the same value i leave it for you to work in the same way once you know time of ascent time of descent you can find out total time of flight total time of flight is given by both of these T A and T D time of ascent, time of descent. That will be this V zero sin alpha zero by G. That is again T D also the same thing, so it becomes twice here. You will be able to get time of uh, flight like that. When you have got like this, now the next point to what you can see is this first we can find this, you can find this also easily. The third thing is horizontal way. Where is it going to reach the ground? Suppose it is going to reach the ground here, say, at some uh, Q here, say. You want to find out what is that OQ. And that is what we will find out here. Vertical dis horizontal displacement, I call it. And that is, I will show it here for convenience. the third one it is starting from here where it is reaching on the other end there on the ground this is what is known as the range of the projectile we call it the range it is horizontal displacement horizontal displacement in this case so what you get here is uh, R I call it range, therefore I call this entire thing as R. That is horizontal displacement. Because it is horizontal, it must be calculated from the U cos alpha component, nothing to do with the U sin alpha here. So it is sorry, V sin alpha we wrote here, V V0 cos alpha 0 in the given time of flight. During the time of flight, how much horizontal distance it is moving is given by that. And interestingly, you can calculate this equation, you will find v0 cos alpha 0 into time of flight is given just now as 2u sorry 2v0 sin alpha 0 by g you simplify this you will get v0 square 2 sin alpha cos alpha it can be written as sin 2 alpha by g so this becomes the equation for the horizontal range, we call it. So this is the range. You can see interestingly, this range depends on alpha now, initial velocity and alpha. Here also the maximum it reached depends on initial velocity and alpha, initial velocity and alpha. Those are the two things which govern the entire thing. One, it is the vertical thing, G's influence is there. Even though G appear is appearing here, it is as a constant is appearing here. It does not mean the horizontal distance is, is influenced by G there. That is not the idea. That is the idea is while it is going up, it is coming down there. Horizontal velocity is not affected by G, but because it is happening during the same time, that time of flight is affected by G, therefore range is getting affected by G here. That you should understand. 
Interestingly, in this equation, when alpha 0 becomes 45, you see what happens. Then the range equation you will get as v0 square by g because sin 2 alpha becomes 1. 2 into 45 becomes 90. So sin 2 alpha is sin 90 is 1. Therefore, it is v0 square. This is what is called the maximum range you can have. You take any other value for alpha, this will be less than v square by g only. Because any other value for this will have less value for sin. So therefore, sin maximum value is 1. That is only for 90 degrees there. So this is what is called maximum range. So if you want to project a body from this point, so that it goes, it covers the maximum distance horizontally, <coughs> you must project it always at 45 degrees. That is the idea. Another interesting that you can see from here. That is, suppose you take uh, a particular velocity v0 and project with alpha equal to 30 degrees and same velocity with a different angle 60 degrees. That is, the first one is alpha 0, second one is 90 minus alpha 0. That is the idea. 1 alpha 0 and there is 90 minus alpha 0. If you do like that, if you do like that, work out the value for the range here, you will find the same value once again because I write here. Suppose the first one is V0 square sin 2 alpha 0 by G. The second one is V0 square sin 2 instead of alpha, we write 90 minus alpha 0 by G. I give a particular example here. You take any example which the difference between them is, uh, which is some of them is equal to 90 degrees there. If you see like this, what you find is, you will get V0 square sin 180 minus 2 alpha 0 by G. You know this is nothing but V0 square 180 minus 2 alpha is again sin 2 alpha only by G. You can see both are equal. That means if your body is projected at two different angles with the same speed and you two have uh, angles happen to be complementary angles, some of them is equal to 90 degrees, then they will have the same range. Then what will be the difference? This maximum will not be the same, it will be different. That means if you show in the figure, it will be like this. This is the case. If one is say alpha 0, another one is 90 minus alpha 0 suppose, that angle, then both will have the same range. Only thing is the maximum heights will be different. This will be different. You can see that. So that is what the property of the projectile is. This is the asymmetric case, what you can simply understand. In the case of a, a more general example, you can start from anywhere and the body may land up anywhere. This is a case where the body is landing up only at the same level horizontally here. If you are projecting from ground, it is coming to ground again there. You need not do that. You can have, suppose there is a building like this and you project the body like this. So the body projects comes down like that. Up to here to here, what we said is the same thing as what this is. So that is what we are describing in the equation. You can completely know the location of this one, this point where it is coming down also in the extending the same argument there. Only thing is here the vertical component, horizontal component, this is Vx, 
and v y here and this is alpha 0 as would is what we said. So, to this extent you can work out the range by using the formula what you are given. From there the range, the remaining distance is, it can be calculated separately. How do you get that? By the time it comes here, it will have the velocity. One more interesting thing in the uh, projectile is, if the velocity is in this direction at the point of projection, at the same point horizontally where it is touching the ground there, in the earlier example what I gave, will be in this direction, the velocity here will be like that and this will be equal to V0 in magnitude, only direction is changing, this is plus V0, exactly the other way around. So, this is V0. So, with whatever velocity it is, it is projected here with the same speed, but whatever speed is projected from here, same speed and at the same angle here, it will touch, that is symmetry of the parabola there. So, here, if you know the velocity at this point, you will know the velocity at this point also. If this is V0, it will be same value there also. From there, this velocity is having two components now, one component like this, Vy, Vx here. This Vx is the same as that, V0 cos alpha 0. This is different, this value is different. For this Vy, it is because of the V0 sin alpha 0 that is vertical component here minus g into t. What is t? Time of flight. That means V0 sin alpha 0 minus g into 2V0 sin alpha 0 by g. That is the time of flight. So, this velocity is different, vertical component is different. Accordingly, you will know the velocity at this point. So, with this velocity component here, with g further coming up there, you can find out displacement y here. So, y displacement you call from here to there downwards and this will be given by uh, Vy minus sin opposite direction Vy minus half g t square, t is here, oh, sorry, the time, uh, just a minute. Suppose time taken from here to here down is some t there, you must take that time and take V y from here, substitute there and get the value of that one. So, you will get y with a minus sign indicating that is downward there, otherwise it is simply plus sign, do not indicate direction downwards there. Like that you can find out the y component. In the if time is known, you can find out the x component also by simply multiplying this V 0 cos alpha 0 with the time there. So, then it will tell you where the x component of the distance there. So, both x and y components can be known, x and y velocities can be known. So, anything else what is asking the problem can be always known. So, depending upon that you can also know for this final velocity and what, what angle is touching also you can find out here, that also can be known because the angle is given by tan inverse V y by V x. Once you know V y and V x, you can find out the angle also from at which it is touching the ground there. This is a more general case, you are projected up from a height, it is coming down like that. The properties from here to there can be used from the equations what you already derived. From here to there can be separately calculated. Take the example of simple horizontal projection, simple still further case of a particular uh, projection horizontally. Suppose a body is projected horizontally with a velocity like that. Then you are starting from here, so it comes down like that. So, initial angular projection is 0 here, alpha 0 is 0, velocity is V0. Then what will be the projection, what will, what will be the case here? It will come down only vertically, it won't go up again. That means only the down half parabola can be registered there, that will be seen there, the up half parabola will not be seen there. So, that is nothing but a part of the entire thing. You put alpha 0 is equal to equation also you can see here. In that case, you will get y is equal to alpha is 0 is 0, then the entire thing becomes 0, you will get the equation as minus half g x square by v 0 square, because cos alpha 0 is, cos 0 is 1. So, it becomes, so you will get this equation. This equation tells you the parabola from here to here. So, how the x and y 
coordinates are changing from point to point can be known. Velocity can be found out in the same way like what you have said earlier. So everything concept goes based on only that the vertical component is affected by G, horizontal component remains unaffected everywhere. That's what it is. I give a small example, see, it's some, some question, let us see. How will you answer this? Suppose there is a tree on which a monkey is sitting here, say. There is a monkey sitting there. And a person sees here and tries to shoot it, maybe with a stone, all right. Not a bullet, say, all right. He projects from here directly to hit the monkey there. The moment the monkey sees the fellow is hitting it, he is hitting there, the monkey starts falling down from there. Suppose it leaves the branch of the, suppose there is a branch like this of the tree and the monkey that is hanging here just leaves it and try from there. The stone starts going and the monkey starts coming down. Will it be able to hit the monkey or not? Will the stone hit the monkey or not? See the question. I repeat again. From a height, a boy is projecting a stone here and there is a monkey sitting here and the moment this is left from the hand of the boy, the monkey also leaves the branch there. Will this stone hit it or not? It will definitely hit provided it has a sufficient velocity to reach the monkey there. In sense, if the, if it, 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 the motion of this stone will be like this. Now, suppose there is sufficient velocity to reach up to the tree, then wherever the monkey is falling, the definitely stone will touch there. Because the horizontal component of velocity is only helping it to go in the horizontal direction. It is coming like this. By that time the vertical component is developed, the vertical displacement is from here to here. So the stone has come vertically from here to this level. This level. This also is just leaving it, it is also falling freely under gravity. That will also have reached the same point here by then. Because both are having the same zero inch velocity vertically and both are influenced by the same g, the acceleration due to gravity. So therefore, definitely the stone will meet him there. Suppose the velocity of the stone is large enough, then it may hit earlier itself here. Depending on the nature of the value of the velocity, magnitude, it will hit there or here or here, depends. Definitely it will hit the monkey. Understand? So, you can now imagine such questions and problems and try to see what is the efficacy of these projectiles. Where do we get these projectiles, these problems of projectiles generally? We come across these things in war fields. You want to attack the enemy camp there without being seen by him. They will all sit behind a hillock here. Their guns are projected, tanks are projected like this and they give the uh, shot from this direction, it goes up there and then hit the ground. Because it is going up and coming down symmetrically, nothing is lost, there is enough energy with the shot to touch the target and then um, vanish it there. Therefore, we find the projectile application. Similarly, we get suppose there is floods are occurring there. When there is a helicopter is flying and you are dropping food, food packets from the helicopter there. If there is a particular point where you drop the food packet there, like for example, you are dropping from a helicopter here, you are dropping food packet here, it won't reach down exactly down here because there is already a horizontal velocity of the helicopter there. So the food packet will reach somewhere else here. So you want to drop it here, you must release it much earlier itself. This can be known from the knowledge of the projectiles there. Similarly, bombing from the flights, the enemy camp there. If you drop the bomb here, it will hit here actually. So before knowing where you are going to hit it, you must know where you should drop it. So accordingly, the application of projectile goes. All numerical problems are given based on that concept only. Many problems are given, you can check and try to understand with this background only.